Just met with that really nice gentleman and his wife. They've got this uh, older New Holland. It's a TC30. <clears throat> got a bucket and a gannon on it. And uh, then he's got a mower for it as well. Um, he's just got his house up on the market right now that he's selling. People are coming to look at it right now. And, and then he's got movers showing up tomorrow. So, but I need to go and get some money. Be back in the next day or two. Pick this thing up. I am quite happy with it. I don't know about the rest of you, but after I plant a tree, I come out here like eight times a day, check on it. Has it budded out yet? Has it got any leaves, any flowers? Did it dry up? You know, has the ground dried up? Did one of my kids ride their bicycle or a wagon into it and break it? It's happened. I'm out here with them right now. I like standing in my trees. Try and think five years from now, what will this look like? What will I have had accomplished in five years? That's... I don't know. That's what I think about. Um, when I lived back in Arizona, I had a front yard with 20 some odd trees. I had another 20 in the backyard. Um, we just, I had them everywhere. We, we planted apple, peach, plum, pear, apricot, nectarine, uh, fig, grapevines, banana palms, um, I, I just, uh, what did we do? We did some, I don't know. We, we did a, just a bunch of different stuff. And I loved going out there and sitting on the front porch and just enjoying those trees. I enjoyed picking the fruit off of them, having all the neighbor kids and everybody else come around and pick them, my wife doing her canning. Uh, and and that, was, that was it. I, I was in heaven. Um, and now I get to do it all over again. I love, I love this. I love coming out and seeing them. Especially when I get to find the one that is finally leafing out. There's another one. Looks like my plums are all waking up. What kind is this? Stanley Plum. So all of the trees, you can see the row. Well, you can't really see the row, but there's diagonal rows. So right there and up there and again, those are all plums. They all, all of my same types of trees are, are in diagonal rows. I know I've said that before, but for, you know, Maybe I got a new list, a new watcher. <laughs> and this is me. I, I, I don't know. I watch, uh, I watch another guy, Steven. Steven, is that his name? He goes out to his orchard and I see him walking around and listen to all of his birds and uh, picking apples and he takes a couple of bites and goes, nah, this isn't a good one. And he throws it down. <laughs> and uh, I, I can't wait to be able to do that. Five years. Five years. We have been on the search for a few months for a tractor I, I've gone back and forth between a tractor a skid steer uh, uh, one with tracks um, maybe uh, I really wanted to get a like a Kubota 530 uh, wheel loader 
Um, but I just found this New Holland TC30. Um, it's got a loader, it's got a Gannon, it's got a, a brush hog and the trailer. The guy was selling it all as a lot for way cheaper than what I found just the tractors for anywhere. I'm really hoping that with everything I've read and everything I've searched on it, that this will be what I need. Uh, not necessarily what I want, but definitely what I need. Uh, 30 horsepower, um, the flow rate. I, I am wanting to get a wood chipper. I know I've mentioned that so many times, uh, but I need to find one that I can afford. The same thing with a uh, with a rototiller. You need to get a rototiller attachment for this tractor, but it's probably going to have to end up being one of the smaller ones because the PTO, you know, the horsepower on it, uh, the horsepower on this 30, but the PTO only produces, I think it's 25. So you have to really watch some of that stuff. Make sure you get the right piece of equipment for the right tool. If I just go out and buy a big rototiller and put it on there, and I need, you know, 50 or 60 horsepower on it, it ain't gonna do me any bit of good. Even though it's a big one like I want, it doesn't do it. So let's find the right tool for the right thing, which I'm hoping that this tractor, like I said, does. The guy has kept it really well maintained. Uh, first owner, he's got all the books, all the receipts. Um, guy bought it and built his house, cleared his land with it. it uh, just beautiful little place. So, otherwise I keep staring at that thing. I've got it all strapped down the tra to the trailer. I'm gonna go down here maybe, uh, oh, just until it, it flattens out better. We'll get out and check the straps again, make sure everything is shifted the way it needs to be. I think I've got it right. We'll check. All right. Oh, there we go. All right. Lights work on it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's get it home and get it working. Put it to work for me. All right, I just got back home and these things did amazing. I'm telling you, if you don't know how to do that or if you're still tying them up like, like most of us used to, um, this is the only way, uh, as far as I'm concerned, to, to haul your straps around. So this strap, just like that, is all done up. And then when you need to, you can simply pull it back through. Oh, come on. <clears throat> there we go. Pull it back through. And then it's all done and it unwinds and falls all over the ground. Come on. There we go. Anyways, that's a much, much better way to uh, to tie your straps up. <clears throat> you can travel all over the place like this. And it doesn't matter how long they are, how extra long or how short. You know, you don't need that stuff flopping all over the place.
Now let's go drop that stuff off back here. And then we'll get that trailer unhooked. Oh. Probably should have flipped that around so I could hook up to it easier. That's all right. Let's turn around and get rid of that brush cutter. Okay. Um, the guy who had this, he built this little receiver deal. He bolts on there, and uh, I'm going to hook that up. What's kind of nice is the ones that I've always done. We just cut out one of these holes so we can stick the ball in it and we just always leave the ball in there but this is uh this is nice if you if you don't want to have that and you want to always have a a flat loader don't want to have to take that ball off all the time i'm on a bit of a incline here i didn't know if that was doing anything at all so let's Throw that in there. Let's get this one. And oh, this tire. You know what? This tire is no good. I'll leave that in the trailer or truck. Put a new tire on that. I'm gonna jack this thing way up because it's quite high up in the air. And as I try and go up those hills over there, I don't want that back end to hit. So let's put this away. Now you should put one end or each side, but I'm okay with this. Now I know most of you are probably like me. After you've strapped your, your equipment down, we take our, our stuff, we bring it around, we tie it in knots. That that's a horrible way to do things. How often have you lost those straps? They start fluttering in the wind. You have to pull over, you have to fix them, or worse, they go back underneath the tire, and then this thing 
pops and breaks, it explodes, um, cause you all sorts of issues, or the strap comes undone, you, you end up losing the strap on the highway. Well, let me, let me show you how I do it. I'm going to take this slightly bigger than your fist. Then I'm going to roll this up like so. Okay, I've got about two feet here at the end, maybe a little less. I'm going to take that cord. I'm going to make a loop in it or just well, let me have do it. Let me think about this for a second. I reach through it, grab the cord, pull it through so I've got a big loop right here. And then just wrap it back over and around this one more time and pull it tight. And then this can sit there and dangle as much as you want. And this is not going to come undone at all, this right here.